Robert Michael Nesmith was born on December 30, 1942 in Houston, Texas. His mother, Betty invented liquid paper and would later leave the $20 million estate to him. Affectionately nicknamed, Nez, he learned to play saxophone as a young child and would join the United States Air Force years later. After two years in the Air Force, he left to pursue a career in folk music. In the mid-60s, he left home to move to Los Angeles, California, with the intent of getting into the movie business. During this time he formed the duo, Mike and John, and recorded several solo singles under the name, Michael Blessing. With hopes of getting a job as a songwriter, Mike auditioned for the Monkees in late 1965. While still a member of the Monkees, Mike's first solo album, The Wichita Train Whistle Sings, was released in 1968 and reached number 144 on Billboard's charts. Also in 1968, Different Drum, a Nez written song, became a major hit for Linda Ronstadt in The Stone Ponies. By 1970, Mike had left the Monkees to form the first national band, which would begin his successful solo career as the father of country rock. Mike and the first national band would sign to RCA Victor and release two albums in 1970, Magnetic South, and Loose Salute. Along with the albums, Joanne reached number 6 on the adult contemporary charts and number 21 on the pop charts, and Silver Moon peaked at number 7 on the adult contemporary charts and number 42 on the pop charts. In 1971, the second national band was formed to release, Nevada Fighter, that year and, Tantamount to Treason, in 1972. In 1972 the band separated and Nez was left to record, and the hits keep coming. After 1973's, pretty much your standard stash, Michael left RCA Victor to form Pacific Arts in 1974, after the failure of his countryside, label. In 1977, the hit single, Rio, and its accompanying album, From a Radio Engine to a Photon Wing, were released as was Nez's TV chart show, Pop Clips. The show further developed Mike's idea of music videos, which was later bought from him by Warner who developed it into MTV. 1978 brought Infinite Rider on the Big Dogma, which would turn out to be his last album for over a decade. While he held off on his music career, Mike produced short films for Saturday Night Live and Fridays in 1979. By the early 80s rolled around, Pacific Arts was one of the most successful companies in the country and Nez had won the first ever Grammy for Best Music Video in 1982 with Elephant Parts. He even starred in his own comedy TV series called Michael Nesmith in Television Parts that aired on NBC for eight episodes. 
After making two guest appearances with the Monkees in 1986 and 1989, he released his first album in over 10 years in 1992, titled, Tropical Campfires. Nez supplied background vocals for Peter Tork's 1994 solo album as well as releasing his own solo album, The Garden, which was nominated for a Grammy Award in the New Age category. For most of 1996 and early 1997, Mike participated in the Monkees' 30th anniversary. During this time, he also formed a new company, Video Ranch, which would be the home of his past and future projects. Nez showed he was a worth novelist in 1998 when his first novel, The Long Sandy Hair of Neptune Zamora, was released. He spent 1999 touring the country to promote the book, which would be released on audio CD in 2002. Also, near the turn of the century, Nez won over $47 million in a court case with PBS that had destroyed Pacific Arts. In 2019 Nesmith toured focusing on his 1972 album, and the hits just keep on coming, in a two-piece configuration with pedal steel player Pete Finney, the first time in this format since 1974 with Red Roads. Nesmith was also joined by special guests Ben Jabbard and Scott McCauley on opening night in Seattle. Nesmith was forced to cancel the last four dates of his 2018 tour with Mickey Dolenz due to a minor health scare. In an interview with Rolling Stone published on July 26 of that year, Nesmith said he had undergone quadruple bypass heart surgery and had been hospitalized for over a month. Nesmith died from heart failure at his home in Carmel Valley, California, on December 10, 2021, at the age of 78.